Welcome to the final episode of creating a Viking-inspired broad sax. The sax is almost done and just needs a little bit more polish. For giving the steel a matte finish that edges nicely, I prefer to use scotch bright belts. As the grinder marks are mostly across the belt, grinding on the diagonal lets me see if there are any deep scratches left that need to be fixed. Fixing in this case means going to a different belt, as the scotch bright belt does not really remove a lot of material. During the last stages of working on the grinder, I prefer to check frequently as etching and ferric chloride has a tendency to accentuate any imperfections. In fact, I just encountered such an imperfection on the back of the blade and decide to go to a fine grit Trizac belt to fix the problem. My Beta B3 belt sander makes changing belts quick and easy, although it helps to press down the arm to reduce the tension first. With the new belt, fixing the small imperfection on the back of the blade is quick and quite easy. The video does not quite show it, but it was there. Once I'm happy with the shape, it's back to the scotch bright belt. Now it's just a few more passes and then I'm done. Before etching, I prefer to run the grinder with the length of the blade. This is also another good check that no vertical sander marks from the more aggressive belts are left in the steel. Before etching, I want to make sure that the blade is free of any oils from handling it with my hands. I'm applying a general purpose natural cleaner and then do another pass just with plain water. This is usually sufficient to ensure an even edge across the whole blade. I put the blade in the leg vise mostly to give you a better view on video. Usually I just grip the sword by the tang and then clean the blade that way. To suspend the blade in my ferric chloride solution, I'm taking a strip of leather and some vice grips to hold the sword firmly at the tang. This allows me to submerge the blade and just leave it hanging in the ferric chloride for about 20 minutes. In this case, I forgot slightly about time and left it in there for 25 minutes, which made for a pretty deep edge. You cannot really see anything on the video because the blade turns so black. First, I let the ferric chloride drip off the blade back into my container and then I'm using my general purpose cleaner and wipe everything off. For pattern welded blades, I have developed a very simple procedure for bringing out the pattern. After etching, I'm applying mother's metal polish to remove any remaining oxides. It first needs to be wiped on, and then it needs to be completely wiped off. You can tell by the kitchen paper turning black that it has not been completely removed yet. After the metal polish, I'm using fine steel wool as the final polishing pass. While steel wool by itself works well also, in addition to the steel wool, I'm using a mixture of oil and red iron oxide that I have mixed into a slurry. This is quite a mess. In fact, a whole bunch dropped on the floor, and after wiping it off from the floor, it sort of looked like blood stains. This is as it may be. The beautiful pattern in the steel is slowly being revealed. In this video, I am only showing one side of the blade. Usually, I would switch over to the other side while still being at the same stage of polish. Here is the whole blade after polishing. Blade photography is quite challenging and so is taking video in a way that reveals the pattern. In my case, I was waiting for a cloudy moment so that the sky had roughly the same amount of brightness and illumination. The close-up of the blade shows you some pretty activity in the steel.
The darker spots in the blade come from differential hardening, where the shallow hardening steel did not quite react the same. To test the blade, I decided to put the temporary handle on it. I will not keep the sword myself, since it's a present to a friend who will create and put on the fittings. To sharpen the blade, I grind in the secondary bevel on the slack belt. Since this is not modern steel, and the sword is meant to take some abuse, I left about the sixteenth of an inch thickness for the blade. I was not quite sure how to test the blade, and was also a little worried that the friction fit of the handle might come off. Yes, the handle is not glued on or in any other way secured, it's just stuck on. The garden and some water bottles seemed like a reasonable option. If you have never cut with a sword, it's important to align the blade geometry with your cutting angle. If you don't hit your target with all the support of the blade behind it, the cutting exercise will not work well, and I clearly need more practice myself. Let's try one more time. This seemed to work slightly better. In any case, the bottles are destroyed now and perhaps not the best cutting exercise object. Overall, the sword felt fine and the impact on hitting seemed okay as well. Looks pretty good to me. Cut alright as well. Alright, that's it for this time. Thanks to everyone on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.